What is up guys? We just got back from picking up this custom super jet. Uh, it popped up on Facebook Marketplace right down the road. Uh, Alex, Alex saw it within the first 30 minutes. Uh, the guy listed it for $2,500, but uh, we said we'll come get it for 2,000 cash. And uh, he was like, well, you're the first person to message me, so if you come and pick it up, I'll sell it to you. Uh, it's got Wimbledon stickers everywhere, so um, we think that it has the hood and nose piece. It has an aftermarket pole for sure. Oh my gosh, I just noticed that. But um, yeah, and supposedly Wimbledon's did these paint jobs. Uh, we posted on the Facebook group and we've got a few responses so far, but um, check out this sticker. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll pop the hood, check it out. The turf is really rough. The paint's all right. I mean, it's like got these like spider cracks pretty much everywhere. But uh, honestly, like, I think I'm just gonna leave it how it is. You know, I think it looks really cool. Uh, I think the turf will really bring it back to life. Um, it's got this scupper. It's got a, uh, what is that? A carbon fiber ride plate. Um, and then it's got a trim setup already on it. I've never had a super jet with trim. So it's gonna be pretty cool. And uh, other than that, yeah, I think we'll pop the hood. Oh, it's got front exhaust like Alex super jet too. I thought that was pretty funny because I literally was saying that I didn't want it whenever we were going there. Bottoms seen better days. Um, let's see. We think it has an aftermarket impeller. We didn't get to check that out yet though, but yeah. Footholds. Things go pretty deep up in there. Um, yeah, let's pop the hood. Yeah, guys. There's under the hood. We think this is a, what do you say, Riva dry pipe. And then it's got one of the OG ADA heads, like really old. Um, and then I'm just taking the air filters off now because those things are clapped. Uh, looks like the hole is reinforced. Yes, yes it is. I can clearly see it's got sheets like right here. Yeah. And then uh, it's got the front exhaust, which I don't like. Yeah, that, that pipe is massive. Like, look at that I thing. I think I've got two Pro Ks right here for you. Yeah, I got, yeah, I have a few sitting over there. I got brand new ones in my car you have. No, I'll, I'm fine. Like, look at this engine bay, man. Like, it doesn't need new ones right now. But, uh, what's that battery box? It looks really big. It's custom. Custom. Yeah, so, huh. Like you said, it's got a build fine. set up. Man, I don't know. It's definitely a beast, but now we need to figure out what we need to do. I guess we can do a compression test and obviously strip all these old fuel lines off. I wonder if it has an enhancer. It might. It probably should. And then I think he included some more of these uh, dampeners. Board mounts. Yeah. So that works out. Why oh, that's cut? Huh? Why is this cut right here? Was there a bracket or something? Yeah. They probably, I, I know these dry pipes are prone to fucking cracking. Yeah. So they probably just cut it off. Because usually when they vibrate like this, they crack a lot. But yeah. God, that cup of dung is hot. Just king. Man, these colors like surprisingly really do pop for how old they are. And it looked like it was sitting on like outside on the side of his house. Yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited to just Strip all this turf off and, you know, kind of clean this up as best as I can. The pole's got some pretty good damage right there. I wonder why he has a Protex sticker. Sponsorship. Spark plugs at least look like there was some lubrication. That's a good sign. Guess we're gonna dump a little bit of oil in the cylinders and then uh, do a compression test. All right. This is just a cheap gauge. It's pretty accurate though. It's pretty accurate. It's a picture 210 on it. My yeah. super jet. So it's got the same done as mine probably has in it. Yeah, 
Let's go. Be even. <laughs> Let's go. We just showed up to this guy's house and handed him the cash. We didn't even, we didn't check anything. And then another thing we noticed, let me see, I think it's this way. Yeah, it has 64X cases. So I think this thing might be a 760. Wow. Now, nah, wow, so it has compression. Now you need fuel um, and spark. Man, do we want to just send it? Or do Good. we want to freshen it up? What's, I don't even know. Happen, bro? I don't even know. I mean, I got another 701 ready to go. Let's just start the thing up. Well. Alright, you got the e-box here. Alec thinks that there's MSD. Here, you want to pop it open for me? Answer? Huh? Yeah, hold on. Let's see, because for whatever reason, they blocked off the ground and had it grounded on the uh, on the motor. Yep. Wow, you called it. <laughs> what? Look how mint that e-box looks, too. Yeah, MSD. Wow. Uh, Is that MSD? Yeah, I don't know. It looks different. I can pull it real quick. Just pull it back in. Let's just send it. Wait, what does this say? Yeah, it's the MSD logo. Sweet. You can see the ignition part and the rest says MSD in there. I knew it. I knew you it. You knew it? Okay. I'll give you that. And then uh, we pulled the motor apart, got everything stripped out. My camera's all died, so I didn't really get much on, much of it on video, but um, cylinders look really decent. Clapped. Uh, it's got a stock bore. Um, it's got a 61X top end, and then it has the 64X uh, 760 bottom end. But I mean, it's basically like 62T cases because they just blocked the second, um, what are, what's that thing called? Siphon? Not siphon. Um, pulse line. The second pulse line. Yeah, I don't know why I called it a siphon. But uh, standard bore pistons. I mean, everything looks really good inside. On the outside, not so much. And then we got everything stripped out. I don't know why I hooked these up. But yeah. Um, she's definitely reinforced. Um, you know, we're gonna really clean it up with the pressure washer tomorrow. So uh probably gonna call it a night here. Alright guys, it's the next day. Um so far all I've done is I just took the uh California numbers off the side and then I think I'm gonna take the factory pipe stickers off. Um because I wanna put my TX numbers right here. I didn't really like how he ran them like up like that. It didn't look that good to me. So I'm probably gonna go red and black right here. That's what I'm thinking. And then um, got the motor out. I don't know if I showed this, um, but it has a, I think it's called Genetics. Jet, let me see. Jetnetics uh, flywheel. And I looked at those things and they're like $600 online. So we got this, we got the MSD, we got the pipe. I mean, this thing literally just has goodies everywhere. And uh, I've been cleaning my workbench off so that I can put the motor up here and have a good clean working surface. Um, and then we still need to clean out the inside of the ski. Probably gonna do that. Uh, we went and ripped today, it's Memorial weekend. So we got a really good session in. And um... all right guys, I've just been working on cleaning up the hole. Uh, I'm not really gonna document all this because, you know, I've done multiple engine bay paintings and it's just the same thing, you know, that stuff gets pretty repetitive. So, uh, you know, I got it pretty clean. For whatever reason, I think that like the hood seal, whenever I pulled it off, I guess like little pieces fell in the engine bay and they just like turned into this like goo. But, uh, you know, I try to get it as clean as I possibly can. Uh, now I'm just gonna let it dry in the sun for a little bit and then I'm gonna go over it with some acetone and really clean it up and get it looking really good. And then uh, we'll lay down some paint. And uh, I just got all the paperwork in, so this thing is fully legal now. I'm ready to get her on the water. All right guys, engine bay is completely painted. I got my mid shaft from Jet Maniac. And then I'm going with the Ross motor mounts. I was reading some pretty, you know, mixed reviews on them, but I want to just try them out for myself, see how they look. 
the uh, black engine bay came out really good and then I have my jet maniac water box and then I got a blosion uh, battery box I don't really like buying stuff from blosion but theirs was the only one that actually had the um, gas tank strap holder in the right spot so it was only 40 bucks but uh yeah that's pretty much it uh i just finished rebuilding the motor so we're gonna drop that thing in and uh this thing's ready to go all right guys we're back on the super jet this video has been like over the span of probably like two weeks so if i've repeated myself or i've showed something multiple times i'm sorry um this is where we're at today i think that this thing should be starting up today and water test tomorrow. So hopefully the next few clips are, you know, all consecutive. But uh, this is where we're at right now. I stripped all the stickers off. Um, I got the ski completely legal, already got the TX numbers. Um, I got my Jet Maniac sticker on there. And then, so the CF numbers were there with the sticker. Uh, you, can, you can still definitely see where they were at. I tried to put that there to like offset it and then the UMI racing was there, and then there was a factory pipe there, and then the Yamaha that was right here, I took it off. Um, it kind of tore the paint off, off in like a few little spots, uh, and then I pulled the turf off right here, but I'm gonna replace that to make it look good, and then obviously I'm leaving my girl here. Uh, I buffed it out, it, it looks decent, it sparkles, you know, it has its color back, but all these stickers that I removed, and then the ones right here, I got repops. I had a guy on Facebook, I don't remember his name, but uh, he's doing them for me. So it's the exact same size and then it's black. So I'm gonna have all the, all the brands. Um, and then the motor, I completely built it. I wasn't gonna make a video on it because you know I'm not, a, I'm not an expert at building motors. I used Mark Erickson's video um, for the whole thing. I just went step by step with him, so. If you want to build your 701, definitely go watch his video. He really helped me. But uh, I'm going to pull the motor out into the garage, uh, show you it, and then I'll show you out where we're at with the engine bay, and then we'll drop the motor in, and uh, this thing should be ready to go. I'll hook up all the cooling lines. That's pretty much all that's left, and then run the fuel lines. Yeah. All right, boys, there's the heart of the beast. Uh, if you recognize this from my 2010, this is the motor that was out of it. Um, it's now at I think 83 and a half on the bore so I think that equates to like 735 cc's um, and then other than that the only two things that have really changed are I use the um, I, I forget how to say it I think it's like Jetnetics or something I use their light and flywheel and then the MSD that was in the ski whenever I got it so I just I'm basically using the electronics from this ski and then my motor carbs and pipe from the 2010 um but yeah so that's the motor i already got the dual cooling lines hooked up ready to run and then here is where we're at with the engine bay i don't know if i'm gonna have to move this bilge because the way it's facing i don't know if it needs to face that way or what that's just kind of how i set it in there for now as a test run. So I got the OCD Solutions Diddy Bilge in my e-box right here. And then one of these goes to, to his switch and then one of these goes to the bilge itself. So, and they already come wired and everything. Wow, I didn't have that screwed in. But yeah, so I'm gonna put my switch right here. And then I have my primer here. And then that's how it looks with my cold fusion tank. I think all the black looks really good. Mounts look good. And then my mid shaft from Jet Maniac looks really good. Um, I think the white's gonna look really good with the motor. And then the B pipe, with it being all black, it's gonna look sweet. But uh, let's go ahead and drop the motor in there. We'll see how the bilge is gonna work. I'm probably gonna have to move that, unfortunately. And then uh, we'll align the motor. Um, and this thing should be starting up pretty soon. All right, motor's set in there. Looks sweet, I love it. Um, the blue looks, I don't know. So I had these for my 2010 to match all the blue of the ski, but you know, I was probably gonna order some like yellow or uh, red or orange ones for this, but I don't know, the blue doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna have to move the bilge pump 
because it's literally going straight to the bed plate. So I'll have to unbolt that. And yeah, let's see how the motor lines up. So that's there. It's sitting, it's sitting pretty darn flush already. Um, let's see, what else do we need to check? Those lines are both long enough. Yeah, so pretty much all we need to do is move the bilge and then we're ready to go. Man, I love how that looks. I'm so excited. So I ended up turning it in and then I just ran it up and behind the e-box mount up and over. And then when the e-box sits in, I can get it on. That's how it looks. Looks pretty good. Sits well. And then, yeah, I wish I painted this now because it doesn't match this one at all. But the coupler cover is going to sit over it, so it doesn't really matter anyways. All right, guys, I threw a battery in there and I have everything connected. I'm just going to turn it over really quick. I'm, I need to go run to the store and get some spark plugs, but I just want to verify that everything's, uh, you know, connected properly and uh, see if she turns. Hmm, not getting anything. Yeah, that's the start. Okay, got an issue somewhere. Got it to turn over for whatever reason. Every time I was pressing the start button, it was blowing the fuse. So, I mean, I messed with it for a little bit. I checked all my grounds within the e-box and everything was fine. I checked my ground on the starter, it was fine. Um, every all, all of my cables are pretty much brand new, so I was really confused. And then I remembered whenever I was pulling the ski apart, for whatever reason, they had a ground going from the e-box to the intake manifold. So I just got a little battery cable and I ran it. Uh, so now it's grounded and it turns over. So I guess maybe that was something that, M that the MSD enhancer needed. Um, I tried looking on the forums and I didn't see anything about it. Everybody just said that the MSD was plug and play with your stock CDI, but I guess this system needs a ground. So now she's working. So I'm gonna continue to uh, get everything cleaned up and then install the B pipe and we should be good to go. It's a few hours later. I've been dying. I've been working on getting this B pipe in for what feels like hours now. Um, I tore this thing up. Like my powder coating is really messed up now. I can't really see because it's so dark, but uh, yeah, man, I, I forgot that the hole was reinforced and I didn't, I didn't realize that it was gonna be this tight of a squeeze with the B pipe. Um, I, I set it in like I normally do where I do, I bolt down the head pipe and then I put the coupler on and I just try to slide it in. But the coupler over here is literally like on the wall of the ski. Uh, I'll, show, I'll show it tomorrow whenever I'm doing the test ride, but it's literally on it. Um, so what I ended up having to do is I had to, I had to go back and unbolt the motor and then slide it over completely and then assemble the B-pipe outside of the ski and then I slid the whole B-pipe in and then I bolted it down. And man, it, it was a pain in the butt, but it's in now. I got the water box all hooked up. I'm gonna vacuum everything out and uh, get all these little little pieces out. Um, Cause I was reading online that with these scuppers, uh, like any little thing down in the ski will cause this thing to sink. So I'm probably gonna take these two little pieces off or these two up here and pull this thing out and then put my vacuum in there and just suck everything out. Um, and then we should be good. Last thing I really have to do is run all the water lines and then put the gas tank in and we're pretty much ready to go. So I'll probably wrap those things up and then the next clip will be at the lake. <laughs> all right, so we got it out here. Um, the start stop was causing it to not have spark for whatever reason, but Alec went and grabbed another start stop and then uh, she started right up. You're welcome. But uh, we're gonna back her in and run some fuel through it in the water. So 
there's water coming out right here on my ADA head. I guess I blew the O-ring or something. So there's cooling there, and then the ski's filling up with water. Um, it has two old scupper kits, so it has this XFT, and then it's got that one up in there, which that's like a blosion chuck valve or something like that. But one of them's failing, and it's just allowing all this water in. So I have two issues. So I'll probably I'm probably just gonna plug those two uh, through hole things and then order a new o-ring kit we should be good i guess that's that's it for today try again next time